pay close attention. What you're about to see is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Welcome to YPN News, bringing you news as it relates to Bible prophecy. Katan, our Savior said that we would know we're living in the last days when we see an increase in earthquakes, wars, disease epidemics, and the first article proves that the prophecy is being fulfilled and that we're living in this time period. That's right, Jeff. Not earthquakes or wars, but disease epidemics. In fact, in a recent report released by the CDC, they estimate that one in 88 children has a disorder on the autism spectrum. Now, these numbers are up 23% from just two years ago, with the rate for boys with the disorder climbing and currently at 1 in 54. This latest report from the C CDC suggests that autism is, in their words, epidemic. Dr. Gary Goldstein of the Kennedy Krieger Institute, who studies the disorder, said of the recent report from the CDC, that's a pretty enormous number, and I was sort of surprised that it's continuing to increase at this rate of 20%. In fact, these new numbers indicate an enormous situation that the rate of autism has doubled in the last six years. Dr. Colleen Boyle of the CDC, who oversaw the study, says no matter what the number is, one thing is for certain, and that's more children are being identified with autism. In fact, in 2008, the CDC conducted a study of over 337,000 eight-year-olds in 14 states. Now, what they were looking for in their studies were medical records and educational records for diagnosis and symptoms of Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD. ASD. Mm -hmm. uh, ASD refers to a group of symptoms including a profound inability to communicate, mental retardation, and other developmental disorders from mild to severe. The diagnosis of autism can be complicated and subjective. The CDC says this increase is due in part to increased awareness but the cause of autism to them remains a mystery. Interesting. Researchers say that some of the clues to understanding the disorder may be found in studying families. One particular family who has a now 12-year-old son was diagnosed with autism at the age of five. And as a result, their daughter has been monitored since she was born. And so far, she's a typical three-year-old, no symptoms of autism there. But with such a dramatic rise in cases of the disorder, the mother is very anxious for answers, of course. One of her concerns, she stated, was when I have grandchildren, will it be one in two? Regarding the son who is doing better, he went through extensive therapy in specialized schools before he saw improvement. Jeff, so the question is, what are scientists and doctors doing in response to these numbers? Well. Next year, new guidelines are expected to change the way the definition of autism is read, which could drastically reduce the number of children given the diagnosis, particularly children with mild autistic traits. So, Katan, they're not really doing anything about autism. They're just changing the standard so it's looking like there's less children with autism. Oh, yeah. Kind of ignored and maybe the problem will go away. Some disturbing news for anyone planning to fly. JetBlue Flight 191 had to make an emergency landing by its co-pilot after the captain of the plane lost his ability to think clearly. Ranting and raving about threats linked to Iran and Afghanistan, he had to be subdued by flight attendants and passengers mid-flight. Hmm. Clay Osborne, the 49-year-old JetBlue pilot, had 12 years captain's experience. But when his co-pilot noticed the abnormal behavior and physical distress, he was under, he realized he had to do something or else someone would get hurt. Osborne left the cockpit and while gone, the co-pilot requested another pilot who was passenger on flight 191 to come to the cockpit to help fly the plane. When Osborne returned, he found the cockpit door locked, which intensified the situation. The co-pilot then gave orders to the crew to restrain their captain. While some passengers helped, others had to be calm, fearful, that their flight had been hijacked. Lee Cohen from CBS News interviewed some of the passengers who were relieved to be safe on the ground after the horrifying ordeal. 
One passenger described what it was like when the captain returned to the cockpit. He said, he's banging on the door, yelling at the first officer, bring the throttle to idle, bring it to idle, we're going down, we're all going to die, still quoting here, pray to Jesus, open this goddamn door. Yeah, it seems like that had to be scary. A second passenger described the moments before he decided to take action. This man, in quoting him, he said, So the stewardess got a hold of him, but then he got close to the door, the outside door. So I said, I can't let this guy open the door up up here. Flight 191 had to make an emergency landing in Amarillo, Texas. There, Osbin was finally taken into custody, and the plane was screened for explosives as a precautionary measure. However, government databases determined that Osbin had no known association with any terrorist groups. Now, Katan, if the pilot is charged, it would be the first time ever that a pilot was charged with interfering with his own flight. Wow, a lot of firsts. Now, from sky-high chaos to sky-high gas prices, we turn it over to our correspondent, Larry McGee, for an update on what the oil situation is. Larry? Thanks, Katan. The hot topic in politics this week is rising gas prices. The national average hit $3.92 this week, and that is an 18% increase for just this month alone. The question is now becoming, at what point do high gas prices begin to undermine the economic recovery? In an effort to answer that question, CBS business correspondent Anthony Mason found himself at a rather unusual art exhibit located in New York City's theater district where at an empty lot, a three-ton rig suddenly appeared this month, much to the surprise of many Manhattan residents. The art exhibit was actually intended to encourage people to ask questions. And with gas prices $4 a gallon, questions are exactly what business owners like Andy Anastasio are beginning to have. Anastasio, who owns a trucking company which runs over 100 sedans and trucks, says that gas prices are one of his company's biggest concerns. And as prices continue to rise, the price that his business pays is that it begins to erode his company's profits. So at what point do things begin to really break down? One analyst believes that $5 a gallon would definitely be enough to tilt the American economy into at least a consumer recession, although he doesn't foresee that actually occurring. One reason is that when crude oil prices become so high, demand starts to plummet. He went on to say, if crude oil prices get so high that the bubble bursts, what we'll then see is prices collapse or at least drop 10 to $25 a barrel, like what we saw in July of 2008, where crude actually reached over $145 a barrel, but by August, it had plunged to over $121. On the upside, oil fell below $103 a barrel today, which is a six-week low after the Saudi Arabian oil minister commented, that his country could very easily produce more oil, and there is absolutely no reason for gas prices to be so high. For YPN News, I'm Larry McGee. Katan, Jeff, back to you. Katan, as if the economy wasn't bad enough, these high gas prices are really starting to hurt the general public as well as businesses. Mm. That's right, and if gas prices weren't enough to hurt people, in Barcelona, Spain, violent protests have been underway around the country as the government has passed relaxed labor laws, making it easier for employers to fire their employees and cut their wages. Now, two unions called for its members to protest these measures, and the people responded to the call with fierce actions. Well, we have more fighting in the Middle East this week. At least one person is reported killed as Israeli police use tear gas and water cannons against Palestinian protesters as they mark the annual event called Land Day. Now, this day marks the death of six Arabs killed by police in demonstrations against a land seizure in Israel back in 1976. There's also been unrest at various checkpoints in the West Bank. Reports indicate Israeli police have pushed back protesters further into the Palestinian city of Ramallah. They form barriers to stop protesters coming any closer to some of their checkpoints. Now, throughout the day, ambulances transporting injured people have been going to and fro. 
Up to 130 people have been wounded across the West Bank, indicating that the violence is ongoing. Among the injured at Kalandia was one high-profile Palestinian legislator. Now, the Army and police have been using water cannons. They have also been using a vehicle that, when it sprays, it emits an awful-smelling liquid in an effort to try to disperse the crowd. A second crowd control device was used that emits very high frequency sounds, was also used against the demonstrators. Hmm. Our clashes are continuing in Jerusalem as well, and the police there are on high alert. Not just any alert, but the highest alert. So, Jeff, we have diseases, confusion, oppression, and wars. All the perfect ingredients for a system that is getting ready to collapse on itself. But for more understanding on this, stay tuned as Yisrael Hawkins explains these news articles and how they relate to Bible prophecies. For YPN News, I'm Katan Alexander. And I'm Jeffrey Heimerman. Thanks for joining us.